Hello and welcome back to the Rugby Connection podcast. This week, European finals. Heartbreak and heartache in the London Sevens and fantastic scorelines in Super Rugby. Joining us this week, it's just the, the young lad himself again. It's Kyle. Kyle, how are we getting on? Like the introduction there, Murray. Uh, not too bad, but I think I need to retire from score predictions after the stinkers I've had all throughout the season and with that final as well. Exactly. Yeah, I don't do score predictions. I'll predict winners and losers, but I don't do scores because the last time I did it, I think someone lost two grand. Genuinely, in the, in the autumn, some guy came up to me really drunk, asked for my score prediction, and I said it, and he put a bet on it, and I was a try off, so he doesn't get any money. Oh, so I thought you were on about yourself losing two grand. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. I never back my predictions anyway. I, I used to, but it's never got me anywhere. But that's that is what it is. Anyway, what a weekend of rugby it has been. We'll start off on Friday evening, the Challenge Cup final. We all said to Lone, we thought it was going to be the Sleeping Giants waking in. Leon had different answers. 30 points to 12. Leon's first European trophy, first title in 90 years. What an effort. And they deserve to win it, 100%. Yeah, they were by far the best team. And, like, they really went out and played like winners. Like, Toulon's desperation really showed at the end. Like, Cheson Colby scored that try, and he went to try and drop kick it over. And it showed how desperate he was. But, like, after that restart, then they came back... And Toulon were just like, they're walking there trying to fold around the corner and they just weren't getting anywhere. Like they were just, they were finished. Exactly. I mean, even Exabeth had an absolute brain fade and rolled back the years and almost became back East Botha for a solid minute and a half. So if you don't know what happened, Leon winger David Nina Nashvili of Georgia absolutely flattened big Ibn Exabeth. Queen, might we add, perfectly legal. The arena erupted. Leon got the ball back, bobbled around, and even Elizabeth came out of nowhere and killed him. He was knocked out. He was out cold. And nothing was done about it. Wasn't even looked at. <laughs> it was crazy. Like it, sh- it probably should have been a red card. Austin Healy picked up on it straight away on comms, to be fair. Yeah. And, like... They probably should have him in the TMO box instead. I thought the refereeing team throughout the weekend was good, but that was definitely some sort of card. I didn't see enough angles of it, but I think that probably would have been a red. Thing is, that whole game, Luke Pierce did not put a foot wrong and then just missed that. Didn't change the result, but Nina Yashvili should not have got to play on either. Like He went back into the defensive line. He could not tell you what day of the week it was. No, like he was stu- he was stumbling off the pitch afterwards. Like he had some performance and it was brilliant, but he he was walking around like he was out cold for a few seconds. Like he should have been straight off the pitch. Yeah, and even come on, come on, big man, you're better than that. Yeah, it's poor. Like you know, like we know he's a hard hitter and a really dominant player, but there's no need for that. Like, and I'd like wouldn't like to see that kind of continue in the game. So. Hopefully yeah. it gets picked up by the sighting commissioners because something needs to be done about it. Absolutely, 100%. Totally agree. Moving on, same city, because I like I do like the fact that the same city hosts both Challenge and Champions. And that just makes a nice weekend of rugby. I'm sorry, Leinster fans, but we got our wish. We did. And it's nothing against you. We do like to have nice change here. And what a change it was. The yellow and black of La Rochelle. At the death as well, 24-21, Ronald Garros men, champions of Europe. What a game and what a way to win it. Like Arthur Etier is the second, the third choice scrum half and the sixth choice winger for them. And Ronald O'Gara described him as an average scrum half, an average winger, but an amazing rugby player. And like to win that for your team in the 79th minute after like the week before, he wasn't even back to be playing probably. And then he comes in and does that. Like it's it's amazing stuff. And Ehio West as well, he deserves a lot of credit because he really improved himself the last two weeks and stepped up when he was needed. Oh, 100%. And I don't know if you've seen the, the clips, but 
the city of La Rochelle has been Crazy. absolutely jumping. There's 35,000 people at their homecoming parade in a city of 77,000 people. As a rugby city. That's what that tells you. That's that insane. Brilliant. What I, love, what I love is the players went back to La Rochelle on Saturday evening and did, I want to call it like a mini parade. Because if you go on social media, on the Sunday, they did another, another full on trophy parade on the Sunday. So they gave you two. And it was just as wild. Unreal. Just unreal performance. Yeah, it was it was brilliant to be fair. And I saw a load of videos of the little homecoming they had around the port. Like it's crazy. And it's nice to see what it meant for not just the players and the coaches, but just the fans in the city as well. Like 2014, they got promoted to the top 14 again. Then what what's that eight years later? And they win the Champions Cup. And Levani Bot Levani Botia and uh Uini Antonio still in the team from 2014. It's brilliant to see. Beautiful. And the man behind all the all the hard work and all the magic, Ron Rogara, his record as a coach is unreal. So he was Racing assistant coach and walked away with a top 14 title. He then went to the Crusaders again as assistant coach and walked away with two Super Rugby titles. Came over to Arashel as head coach. He got to the final of the Champions Cup last year, came up short. This year, as director of rugby of La Rochelle, he has got the Champions Cup. That That is mental. So this leads me to this question, Kyle. I've seen it online. Ron Nogar for Lions coach. I was going to bring it up, actually. I'm glad, I'm glad you mentioned this. It's an interesting one, and there's a few contenders, but I think at the moment he has to be in the running for it, like... He's definitely going to coach internationally at some stage when he leaves La Rochelle, I'd imagine. But yeah. there's nothing stopping him even being lines coach before that because he's shown what he can do as an assistant coach now as a head coach since he's come on. So it's brilliant stuff. Yeah, I think the run-in for me right now for Lions head coach is Ron O'Gara, Leo Cullen, Andy Farrell, and I know the comments are going to come after me, but I will explain it. Gregor Townsend. Now, hear me out. Wayne Pivak. No, just no. Don. He's a god-awful coach. Don't do it. And Eddie Jones has already ruled himself out of doing it. He doesn't want to do it. When was that? Before the Six Nations, he made it crystal clear he has no intentions of being a Lions coach. Wow. He even, he even name-dropped... Andy Farrell and Gregor Townsend saying it should be one of them. Now, realistically, it will be one of them too because they are both national team head coaches. That's just how it works. But Leo Cullen, uh, his track record's unreal. And then the man of the hour, Ron Rogaro. There's definitely some good, uh, some good coaches around to be in. And I think Gregor Townsend, to be fair, is a contender. I think uh, Stuart Lancaster is probably not head coach, but I'd like to see him involved because he's still doing a great job at Leinster. Yeah, I was just going to say, even in an ideal situation, you can get all four of those men that I've just named. 100%. Like, even if Rogers is head coach, he could be defence coach. You can have Townsend as backs coach or attack coach, whatever you want. Yeah, there's and so, forward there's coach. so many different opportunities to, and ways to do it. So you can have Townsend head coach, O'Gara's backs... Faro, forwards, Cullen is defence, Cullen is forwards, Faro's defence, O'Gara's head, Townsend is, you could switch it up as however you want, and I feel like it, it would work. Yeah, there's definitely some great options there, and I think, I have a question for you, Murray, who's the best coach in the world now? Because there's some great coaches now. Best coach in the world right now? Yeah. Ah, uh, that's tricky. I'm going to go with best coach for me right now, and it feeds into our next thing, Leon McDonald of the Blues. Yeah. Very polite because for as long as I've watched Super Rugby, for the most part, the Blues were good, but they weren't there. Now, under Leon McDonald, 13 wins on the bounce. 
That's unreal. It's never been done. That was a record. And I don't know what to say about the Blues. You love Super Rugby as well. Two weeks in a row, a drop goal wins in the game. It's crazy. Um, they should. They need to go all the way now. Like Maybe last year, people would have said Razor, Scott Robertson. And now kind of probably Leon McDonald. There's some good names to come after. Uh, people to come after Ian Foster. Like There's some good names in the run in there in Razor and uh, Leon McDonald. And they, they're definitely up there because Leon McDonald's really turned around the Blues. And he's definitely passed out the Crusaders now. Like If people were talking about Leinster, Crusaders in the argument before, but now maybe is it La Rochelle and Blues in who would yeah. win versus South? I mean, I'd like to see all those games. Mm. Like we keep like we keep pitching, if you want this global league, I've always said start it off with the champions against champions and then feed it through. So I think the idea I had was you have Champions Cup winner versus Super Rugby winner. You then have the runner, no, the Challenge Cup winner go against the runner-up from the Super Rugby final. You then have the losing finalists in both European competitions go against losing semi-finalists from Super Rugby. That's a really good shout. Like, I'd love eight, to see that. That's eight games. And it would definitely bring in income as well. Like, that's what they want for ev- everyone, every team, every broadcaster wants that. And who's not going to watch them games? Exactly. And again, you could do what Super Rugby did this year. Pick a city and have it for a weekend. Why not? Let's have it in. Try to think of somewhere relatively exotic that's not too far away. Bilbao. Bilbao, that was a good one. And they did a good job at hosting the Champions Cup that time. Like, if you think eight games over a weekend, you picked a bank holiday weekend, two games every day in the stadium. Yeah. I mean, you said it last week. Spain went against the classic All Blacks, not even the actual All Blacks, and 40,000 went in. It's crazy. Like, that goes to show the demand for rugby in Spain. Like, there's no way that them stadiums wouldn't sell out every day. Exactly. And I mean, just like we've just said it, La Rochelle, I know Super Rugby doesn't have their final yet, but La Rochelle versus the Blues, Leinster versus Crusaders, that's always a big one. You could then have, who could be in the Racing 92 against... The Brom- I'm just picking teams at random here against the Brumbies and Leicester Tigers against maybe the Waratahs or, or something like that. But you get what I mean. Like, yeah. They'd all be fantastic watches. Yeah. You could do it before. You could actually do it like next week, realistically. Yeah. Or even as a like preseason thing, scrap the preseason friendlies and just have this big event. That's mm. on for maybe one weekend, two weekends before the season starts. Exactly, because it'll be the Northern Hemisphere side's first proper run out and the Southern Hemisphere lads are already game fit because of the rugby championship. Exactly, yeah. And, you know, them guys are either going into their off season or some guys going into NPC, so it'll be perfect for them. Exactly. World Rugby, if you're listening, give, give it a go. But let's talk about Super Rugby because... Oh my god, the games this weekend. There were so many upsets as well. Starting off, Moana Pacifica beating the Brumbies 32 22. Ooh, what no a game as well. No one saw it coming. And we get another banana kick in the highlight reel with Christian Lilia Fano. I don't know how he got that in. It generally looked like that was nowhere near getting in those stacks and he got in it was insane he's having a cracker of a season as well which is great to see like everything that he's been through over the last five six years like it's great to see him kicking on like I remember he looked like such a good prospect in the in 2013 made his debut against the Lions went off injured really early and but that season he was looking insane and then he's had a lot of rough time since but nice to see him playing some brilliant rugby now it's kind of sickening that he, he burst on the scene in 2013. But, yeah. Yeah, it's um, a long time ago. Absolutely. I mean, big game for me this weekend in Super Rugby. Fijian Drua 
versus Chiefs. Now, the, the Drew did get beat, but it was the first ever game on Fijian soil. Sellout, obviously. Like, this crowd was rowdy. I don't know if you've had time to look at it. No, I haven't seen this one. As soon as, even if they don't score, when the Drua are making meters, that stadium is shaking. It is, it is fantastic to watch. 35 34 to the Chiefs. They narrowly buggered it. Heart, heart, heartbreaking, really, for uh, the Drua, but it's great to see such a close game. And like Chiefs being challenged is a good thing, but it's nice to see Fijian soil as well, like them really pushing it and. You know, really contesting, really. Yeah, I mean, your big question over this New Zealand franchise just stays this week again. Rebels beat the Highlanders, thirty-one thirty. It's it's poor to see that happening. Like Highlanders are really having a poor time, and yeah. like they've got some good players. Obviously, don't don't have the depths in the New Zealand squad that they used to have, but like they really need to be doing better this season. Yeah, you know who I actually really feel sorry for this week. After what I was reading last week, as a Western force. Oh, stop, yeah. All I heard was last week is that the force win, they advanced to the quarterfinals. They've won, they're not going because of points difference. Points difference, yeah. In High- Highlanders, it's not like their points difference is good. Like they're just on plus two, I think. Or plus, plus two, two, yeah, yeah. Or it's three. Nothing. Yeah, it's crazy. Like it's heartbreaking for Western force because. Like they've won the same games as Highlanders, but it's just come down to points difference. And yeah, like it's I'd nearly argue that Western Force have played better rugby. In the last few weeks, I'd hundred percent agree with that. I want to stick on the force a little bit because we always like to keep tabs on guests or friends of the show, as like we, we like to call them. Kyle, you'll be happy. He's coming to Galway. Byron Ralston getting the decided try. In the Hurricanes, and he even shared the video that I made on his Instagram. Wow, legend! He he seems like a great. He seems like a great guy, and I'm really excited to have him come to Galway. Like centre wing, he can play, and he's just been on fire this season. And And it's another magic Aussie with a scrum cap. I don't know what it is, but he started wearing a scrum cap, and and he's Irish qualified. He is. Watch out, next Six Nations. Watch, never say never. Do you want better? Watch it for the November tests. There we go. That's a challenge. And again, sticking with force. This one's a little bit sad. This is kind of dampened my day a little bit. Our previous guest, Richard Kahui, World Cup winner, Super Rugby champion. He's hanging up his boots. He's he's calling it a day. What a career. What a legend. And top bloke away from the game. Had the pleasure to speak to him. Definitely go check that out. It is a self-plug, but it's a World Cup winner. Get the interview watched, because they are fantastic. And yeah, genuinely nice guy, and just wish him all the best in his four years. Such a successful career, though. Like, he turned 37 in uh, is, yeah. the weeks, and like he's played Chiefs, Highlanders, All Blacks. I think he won one or two Super Rugby's. I'm not sure. Yeah, one, he won the Super Rugby with the uh, Chiefs in 2012. Oh, yeah? Went to Japan before it was cool. I like, I like saying it like that because they all go to Japan now. He did, he did it before they, he brought it on the scene. He did it when only him and the overseas players were paid. There we go. There you go. There's your little fact of the day for that. But, I mean, we're going into the quarterfinals next week for Super Rugby and there's some, there's going to be some juicy fixtures coming out of this. I'm just going to double check for now just so I'm not making any fixtures up. Because I'm sure they do it the same way... Yeah, they do. ...as the URC, if I'm correct. It's Blues, like, Highlanders, Crusaders, Crusaders, Reds, Chiefs, Waratahs, and Brumbies, Hurricanes. Oh. Predictions? No uh, scores, because you're crap at it. I'm crap at predictions too, but we'll have a go. Um, well, you have to see Blues winning comfortably against the Highlanders at home. Yeah, Rumbies at home to Hurricanes is an interesting one because both of them Probably. have finished fourth and fifth, but I would back Brumbies. Uh, you've got Chiefs at home to Waratahs, which I'm going to back Waratahs away Ooh. from home. I think it's going to be an upset. 
and you've got Crusaders at home to Reds, who you got a favourite Crusaders, really. Yeah. I mean, it was close this week. I, I kind of like this Crusaders Reds again, though, because that happened at the weekend. Yeah. Did they just get to stay out there then? Did the Reds just stay in New Zealand that week, or do they have to go home to then come back on like a Thursday? I think they have to go home because they would have booked to be home anyway. So Why? What's it's, the it's point? It's tough for them though. Ah, uh, just book, just pay the hotel a bit more. It's not hard. Great weekend of rugby coming up though, like with Crusaders and Reds Friday morning, and then you've Chiefs Waratahs followed by Blues Highlanders, and finishing off with Brumbies Hurricanes. And then you've got the URC quarterfinals this weekend coming. And then the Prem, the last, I call it Super Saturday because all the games are on. Yeah, 100%. We've had a few good Super Saturdays recently. I think every Saturday with, a, with Super Rugby starting off as a Super Saturday. Agreed. It's like Christmas to me. I get asked so many times by, by our guests down under, who's my Super Rugby team? I don't have any. I have all the jerseys for the New Zealand franchises. I can just sit back and watch Super Rugby and feel all giddy with myself. And not really care who wins or loses. But in the best way possible, I mean. Yeah, it's a, it's hard to pick one, to be fair. They all play great rugby, but uh, I'd have said Hurricanes, to be fair, but not not been going the best lately for them. No, nah, it's, it's not. But again, they're still a great team. It's, Super rugby is so weird. Like People think it's so easy. It's, no. it's by far not. like Even you look at that Fijian Drua and Chiefs game, like, if you think that every game is an easy one, then it wasn't for Chiefs that game. Exactly. And all it takes is for you to slip up and for a smaller team to come at you. Yeah. Like Brumbies this week. So it's, yeah, all the teams in Super Rugby are fantastic. But I have got a question for you, Kyle, before we move on to the much quicker part of the rugby world. Is James Lowe better than Will Jordan? No. <laughs> it's close though. We spoke about this. We spoke about this at the weekend. And I think it's closer than you think. I think Jordan is probably he's play, plays fullback for Crusaders, but we'll say winger. I think he's probably one of the best, if not the best winger in the world, leaving out Barchez and Colby, maybe. And I think James but I don't even think Chess and Colby's number one anyway. I think on form he's not, but I think in terms of talent and skill wise he is. But James Lowe's the best in Ireland, probably. But I don't think he is in Europe even yet. But he's really coming up and he's definitely going to be challenged in that spot. Fair. I do think the best winger in the world is Marcus Olimapempe. Interesting. I, I wouldn't have said him. I'd have a few players over him, to be honest. But I just love him. I don't know what it is. He just... He does all the hard work as well. Yeah, he's not just finishing tries, like, getting it and just walking it in, to be fair. Like Johnny, like Johnny May. Oh, I felt good to say. I've not said that in a while. <laughs> it's been a while, to be fair. It's been Liam Williams that you've been hating on more recently. Uh, it's about even. It's, yeah, it's about even nowadays. I can't tell. I can't tell who my most hated is. But anyway, we go down to London for the sevens. And... <laughs> The results in sevens, it's amazing half the time. You get some proper upsets and then you get some very expected as well. It's hard. It's hard. This was very strange though, like with Australia winning it out. Like yeah. the fact that they bet Samoa and then New Zealand, who New Zealand bet Fiji, who are the best in the world probably. It's really interesting how that turned out. Well, it was all to play for. So Argentina were going into this round top of the World Series. But they bombed out of the cup. So if South Africa went all the way, they would have won it. And then the Los Angeles Sevens in August would have been pretty much just a, like a social event more than anything. Mm. But no, South Africa buggered it as well. So it's all to play for in LA. It's crazy. Like, I think the New Zealand-Australia thing was interesting. Like, New Zealand really seemed dominant in their pool game against Australia. And then Australia came out and bet them 19-14 in the final. 
Golden Point as well. Yeah. Love that. Love it. But since you're talking about Australia Sevens, Corey Tool. I shared it on my on my TikTok account. It's got like five thousand views. He ran it from his end goal area. He ran 110 meters and got a try, and nobody touched him. Crazy. Oh, like, honestly, if you've not seen it, go and check you, out. That's, like, that's just like the, the kids when you're playing mini rugby or when you're playing when you're young, and this one kid that can just do everything and yeah. no one touches him. Corey too was that one kid. It, oh, it was absolutely freakish. I don't have words for it. But, I mean, speaking of Sevens, we have got some guests from the Sevens world joining us very soon. It will be out in a few weeks because, like I said last week, we do record in bulk. But we have the Levi sisters, both Madison and Tegan, same interview. That's going to be interesting. Madison's just walked away with Sevens Rookie of the Year. So she's up and coming. She's been at the Olympic Games. She's obviously aiming for the Commonwealth Games. Tegan, I think she made her debut for the Australia Sevens at the Seville Sevens in Spain. So she's just started her Sevens career. But it's going to be a lot of fun. Just dropped the Danny Tusatala interview. Said it last week. I'll say it again. Humble, humble man who loves his family. And I'd want him to come over here so we could see him more often because the MLR, it's not great. It's not the best. Sean, don't let Sean hear this. Oh, actually, you know, with the rugby network commenting on my video. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> so, if you're not aware, the rugby network who cover the MLR footage shared a clip of a referee sending off a player after the full-time whistle for being mouthy. And I stitched it saying, what was the fucking point? Right? I still stand by it. I don't see the point in red-carding someone after a game. Because with the technology this sport has now, referee has a microphone, you'll hear it, you'll get pulled up, you'll get a hearing and you'll get suspended anyway. The red card wasn't needed. So I did that video... Two minutes later, the Rugby Network's official page commented, well, how would you deal with it? <laughs> so, fair play, they, they pulled me up on it straight away, and that was a good laugh, I, I replied. Yeah. Like what Bob just said, just said, like, uh, it would get dealt with anyway. Yeah, I'd just leave, leave, leave it off, like, let someone sign him. Like, the other time I saw that was uh, the player celebrating in the Pro D2, lifting the referee up over his head. <laughs> that, oh, that was even worse though like he's just having a bit of fun yeah but don't touch the ref <laughs> it was funny though it was and I think refs are a bit too serious sometimes but it's a weird line to cross like you want the refs to be professional but you want them to be fun like Nigel Owens yeah you know who is actually fun and I don't think he gets enough credit for being fun Wayne Barnes. I was going to say that, yeah. I think he really is. Like, you see him uh, before the game chatting to the captains and they're having a laugh. And even during the game, though, like, he's having a laugh with a player over... A player bumps into him or something. He's having a laugh with him over it, like... Yeah, it's brilliant. Just to round off, I know we did it last week, but I just want to double-check if any predictions have changed. URC final eight. I can't remember my predictions last week, but... Uh... Oh, fine. So, Ulster or Munster? Just quick fire it. Ulster. Bulls or Sharks? Sharks. Leinster or Glasgow? Leinster. Stormers or Edinburgh? Edinburgh, just to keep you happy. Hey, good lad. I'm going to go Ulster, Sharks, but if it comes down to tipping Bulls, Leinster, obviously, and I'm back in Edinburgh because I'm an Edinburgh boy. You love Mornay Stain kicking. I do love Mornay Stain, yeah, so I need to. I'm trying to. Actually, yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll link it to the podcast. We'll go Ulster because we've had Nathan Doak on. We'll go for. Actually, we don't have a. We've not had South Africans on, so that's free pick in. Leinster. Uh, we've not had a Leinster boy on, and we've not had a Glasgow Warrior on currently, but 
Well, we've had one. Murray McCallum was Glasgow when we had him on, but he's left. And Sione Vailanu is joining Glasgow. Possibly. No, he is, but uh, does that count? Uh, nah. yeah. And Edinburgh, no. we have had Jamie Hodgson on. We've got Connor Boyle coming on. And Murray supports him. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there we go. Let's see if we're accurate, though. I hope so. I'll be watch. I will be watching it and shouting and losing my mind. Can't decide if I'm going to Murrayfield for it yet. Is it on in Murrayfield? They're like, they're doing a thing at the Centenary uh, Pub in yeah. the stadium for I think it's twelve pound. Not you bad. get a, you get an um yeah a pint and a pie on the arrival. You get a picture with the 1872 and the Scottish Italian shield from the URC. And players that are not with the travelling squad are there for a Q&A. And you get to watch the games. That's a great price. That's a great price. Somebody want to come with me? I'll fly over. Yes. <laughs> you will, You do need to fly over Sydney because we need um, to do an RCP. For sure. Probably. I'll be queuing six hours in Dublin Airport first, though. So. Uh, is it six hours? Uh, there was people yesterday, a thousand people missed their flights because of queues outside. Like, they weren't able to get to, through security. <coughs> there's not enough staff. So uh, we might have to postpone it for a while. Well, I'm hoping, and we were, were buzzing for it this year, and it was a good game for me, anyway. Edinburgh versus Connell. Because Edinburgh's very cheap to get to but the whole point of it this year was we could see Mac Hansen in action. But they've done it in the Six Nations, and Mac did so well, he was with the Irish team. So next year for the URC, please, do not do it during the international window. Yeah, I, I don't I don't like the games during the international window, in a way. It's... I do it's, kind of, it's, it's a weird one, like, the South African teams during the Six Nations, like, I it's all... That. it's Yeah, it's good for them, but then... During the autumn or whenever, or during the rugby championship, it's poor. You know, it's yeah. it's harder for them. So it's interesting. Is that why they do it to balance balance out the books or something? I don't know. Yeah, I suppose. When else will you have it? The season's already too long. So could you cut it? No, you can't cut games because <laughs> start it earlier, maybe. I think the season should start earlier instead of ending earlier. I don't see why the URC started at the end of September. Yeah, it used to start in the first week of September, but like finishing in the last week of June is a bit late, I think. Have it start in the last week of August or first week in September and finish at the end of May. Yeah. Like, like now. So and I'm then right you a month and a half off nearly before the internationals because... Guys now are going straight into internationals. Like June 29th, is that the weekend they're playing the Maori All Blacks, Ireland are? And so are the Leinster guys going to be available for that is my question. Because they're, well, they're most likely going to be in the final. I oh, don't say that. Um, that's, that's a difficult one because even Scotland, they've got Argentina three times. But yeah. they're also playing Chile. Well, Scotland A are playing Chile. I'd like to see that, like, Ireland Wolfans and English Saxons come back or even just make the A team, like. I like how you get nice names for it. We have A. Yeah, the, the names are a bit better. I don't know do Wales even have one, so at least at least you have something. Hmm. I don't actually think they do. No, I, I, could, be, I could be totally wrong on that, but not a clue. I've never noticed it or heard of it anyway. Oh, well, if anyone knows... Put in the comment down below. But there's been Rugby Connection podcast covering European finals, Super Rugby, Sevens, and you've even got some fun predictions for this week. Like I've just mentioned, MLR star Danny Tusatawa. The interview came out yesterday. Um, I will be sitting down. I cannot believe this is happening. Tuesday morning, I am sitting down with the greatest of all time. Emily Scarrett. Am I shitting myself? Yes, absolutely. 
but it doesn't matter. We'll crush it. And great, great guest to have on though. Like that's definitely going to be worth a listen. Like all the experience that she's got. Like there's going to be some good stories in there. Oh, hundred percent. And I'll catch her off with a with a beauty as well. Don't worry. I always catch the the guests off guard. So, but yeah, rugby connection. Hit the subscribe button. Get that little notification bell clicked as well because you want to get a first crack at these episodes and interviews because I'll say every week but I do mean it we are going we are getting up there and the numbers are going up slowly but surely but let's skyrocket it let's absolutely blast it we had a milestone on TikTok last week let's smash every milestone let's absolutely smash TikTok let's smash YouTube let's smash Spotify share it like it comment for the fans by the fans Fan interaction is key. But, yeah, we will join you next week for Super Rugby quarterfinals, URC quarterfinals, and the final regular season of the Prem. I think that's it. That next week, there's nothing else. Really? There's no sevens on? No. There's MLR, no sevens in August. MLR doesn't really get covered unless Sean's here. Top 14. I suppose we could talk about top 14, maybe. We'll see. Yeah, is top 14 going into knockouts next week, isn't it? Or is no, there's one round left, isn't there? So, right, okay. So, final I, round of top 14 in Prem and quarterfinals for URC and Super Rugby. There you go. Who wouldn't want to listen to that? I don't know. Crazy we cover, deep. We cover so much and I wouldn't say we're controversial. Sometimes. Uh, you have to be. You have to get the listeners plugged or something. Exactly. But anyway, Kyle, thank you as always. Thank for you. Joining. Right, this has been Rugby Connection. We'll see you next time.